I decided to run, it was from a point where I was, I was frustrated. I was frustrated at the extreme partisanship that you see not only at the state level, but also at the national level. And frankly, we can't afford to be a divided state any longer. We, we have issues that we cannot hope to resolve without bipartisan cooperation. It used to be that Democrats and Republicans could come to the table. They could fight things out on the floor, but ultimately they would come together to find a solution that works for Alaska and moves the state forward in a positive direction. Somewhere along the line, we got away from that, and we can't afford it anymore. With our deficit, in order to find any kind of long-term sustainable solution to any of our societal problems, we have got to get back to a place where both parties understand that when both parties come together and they can walk away with 70% of what they want, that's a good day for Alaska. I am vehemently against using the permanent fund dividend to help bridge the budget gap. The legislature, in my view, kind of painted itself into the to a corner. We saw that the oil market went down to $30 a barrel. We saw the huge hit that was coming to our state, but very little was done to mitigate against that. As a result, the only solution that we had was instituting, was capping the PFD, and this, that in no way should be a long-term solution. In essence, when you take away all the technicalities, all the bells and whistles, Alaskans are being taxed through that PFD. Only we're being taxed in such a way that a kindergartner in Chugiak, whose parents make $40,000 a year, pays the exact same tax as Laura Reinbold. That is not fair. It's not the way Alaska should do business, and we need to get away from that as quickly as possible. I intend to protect our permanent fund earnings and permanent fund dividend in our state constitution. And again, coming forward to, to find, to bridge that deficit, it's going to take both parties working together. We're back up to where per barrel we're at seventy to eighty dollars a barrel so we we've come through the woods so to speak now to, to to finish patching that deficit we just need to get to a point where both parties can agree to work together and understand that our government works best when we have two parties that moderate each other that understand that if they get seventy percent of what they want that's okay this idea that if we if one side or the other doesn't get hundred percent of what they want where they then stamp their feet, shut their eyes, and sabotage and obstruct anything that anybody else does. We, we have to get away from that. We have to get back to where we can actually compromise, moderate each other out, and move our state forward in a positive direction. We're not at the point where we need to worry about taxing, putting additional taxes on the people of Alaska. Again, our oil revenue is back up to eight, or price per barrel is back up to seventy to eighty dollars per barrel. If we have two parties that can work together to find long-term sustainable solutions for our uh, for our deficit, that that's the direction we need to go in. Again, getting that cooperation between the two parties. And when I get down to Juneau, that's exactly what I intend to do. I, I intend to have a cup of coffee with every single senator just to start that personal and professional relationship with each of them, because that's what a senator is supposed to do. Crime is going to take a multifaceted approach. Strictly saying that SB 91 is the end-all, be-all solution for crime is, is that's misleading. That's not the case. Certainly it's a part of it, which is why I intend to work towards repealing the remaining parts of SB 91 that are harming our communities. But also we need to ensure that our law enforcement, our Department of Law, is appropriately funded to where they can accomplish their mission safely and professionally. We also need to address our high unemployment rate. We have the highest unemployment rate in the nation. That, that leads to a rise in crime. In addition, our rising uh, drug use in the form of opioids and increased gang activity. We need to address this situation in a way where we're attacking it from all sides to, to bring the crime down. S simply saying that SB 91 is, is it, we repeal that and then we're done, that's irresponsible.
So again, moving forward with ensuring that law enforcement has the tools that they need that they can appropriately address it is step one. Understanding that the Department of Corrections may not be the appropriate place for some people who are suffering from, from drug addiction. It, if we want to address it, if we want to get to a point where, where people are getting better and becoming healthy, productive citizens, which, which should be the direction we want to go in, we need to understand that some services in order to get people the help they need who want to get off their drugs is the direction we need to go to. Again, also bringing down the unemployment rate, bringing that sense of desperation down, that helps eliminate the draw to drugs.